What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrad89 here bringing you another video. Today's video we are continuing the Nightmare on Elm Street review series. And now we are on to part 5, A Dream Child. And man, this one's going to be kind of interesting to talk about because I have a, hot, a couple hot takes with this one. Because this one typically isn't really liked by a lot of people. Most people prefer Dream Master over dream child but i'm kind of the exact opposite but you know there's always the exception that proves the rule and everything but i'm going to give you today my reasons why but it's not really like a huge gap or anything dream master and dream child i think are actually a really good tandem a really good two films together but like i said i kind of slightly by a hair prefer this film so today we're going to hear my positives the negatives the rating and then i'm going to send you all home so let's do this roll it Dream Child is the fifth installment in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. This one came out in August of 1989, and this is my birth month, birth year and everything, so that's very exciting. This one, maybe that's why I have such a fun kinship with this one, because I think this one actually came out in theaters August 11th, which was five days before I was born, So, which is pretty cool to talk about. But another exciting thing to talk about in this one, let's just talk about positives right away, is that... Alice is a tour de force. I really think Lisa Wilcox might be my favorite protagonist character. I love Nancy so much, and I really think Nancy Thompson is great. She's a great final girl, don't get me wrong, but just Alice is such a strong character, and over the course of the two films, Dream Master and Dream Child, I really, really adore her growth and her character. Add to that, we have a really cool cast in here, and one I must mention right off the bat is Kelly Jo Minter. I love her so much. Is Yvonne she plays Yvonne in this one, uh, Alice's best friend, and she's from my favorite place, the People Under the Stairs. That's where I really know her from, and that's like the main place where I found that character, found her as an actress. And then also she's in House Party and Popcorn. So she's just a really fun actress that I enjoy because she's in a ton of 90s films that just, she just oozes the 90s nostalgia for me. So I really do like that Kelly Jo Minter is in this one. Also, like I said, the cast around them, I just think Alice's friends are really cool. Like we have Dan back as well from the previous film so I just think they're like really legit friends like I like the cast and this film I think returns to home with a little bit of that tragedy character where you know Alice is kind of going through all this but her friends don't really believe her and they're kind of moving past it they're already like over Freddy Cougar, they're like, we're done with that. But this film introduces a new concept, which I think is very interesting, that makes Alice's character a very deep character, is that Freddy Krueger is able to enter the dreams of her child like that she has in her womb, because she is pregnant in this one. That's what we end up finding out, and that's why Freddy Krueger is able to enter the dreams. And actually, I think the dreams in this one are pretty cool because they're unexpected like at this point by the fifth film you know when we get to three and four i think the dreams are kind of telegraphed a little bit when you know you know they're happening you already know what's coming kind of thing you know like you know the people are asleep but when it comes to part five i actually think there's some dream sequences that kind of take me by surprise so and like i said the concept of it being that he's able to enter the dreams through an unborn child that's dreaming i think that's fascinating to me another positive with this film is i think it's really cool that we get a lot more background on freddy krueger and we get amanda krueger in here which is freddy's mom so i think it's really cool like adding that story element into this film to me that makes it very interesting and this was a freddy krueger film that i often return to in terms of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise part five was just one that for some reason as a teen like you know age probably 14 to 15 just re-watch this one very often because like I said I love the story elements I love Alice's character and there are some gruesome kills in this one there could be more but there are some really gruesome kills in this movie. Right there, there's some key, key positives why I like this one better than Dream Master. Like I said, that really goes a long way for me is that concept and Alice's character growth and the characters around her. I really do like it. And this one probably has one of my favorite also one-liners by uh, Robert England as Freddy Krueger when he's, you know, the sequence when he's born again. And I like that sequence, like having the baby Freddy kind of crawl into the outfit, like the suit, and then it grows. And Freddy Krueger has like this awkwardly weird long arm and you just see Robert England's character go like this and he's like it's a boy like that's just such a classic line and I think just that scene in general is so much better than the resurrection of like having the dog 
piss the fire and then seeing Freddy Krueger come out. Like, you know what I mean? It's just so different. This one is how you do a resurrection scene. So I think it's really cool because it's literally a birth scene. The freaking, oh, the ugly kind of gross little baby Freddy is birthed. And then he crawls into the Freddy costume and then grows into a, a grown up Freddy. Like, I just think it's so much better. And it happens in the church and it's like run down. The production design is off the charts in this one too. So yeah, for me, part five is... A lot of points, it's where the money's at. It's some of the best, but it's also some of the worst of the franchise as well. So now we talked about a lot of these cool aspects of the film. Let's get into the negatives, because like I said, this isn't a perfect film by any means or by any stretch of the imagination. So for me, the main negatives, two huge ones, is the scenes with the young boy who plays Jacob in this film. Oh, it's tragic. It is so bad. Like, they're cringeworthy beyond belief. And that's what kind of sucks is, like, I know what they were going for. I really, like, understand that, what his character was trying to represent. And you have Alice kind of talking to her child and, you know, thinks it's not really her child yet, doesn't understand that, but sees these visions and is talking to this boy that she thinks is at the hospital. Like, it's just... It doesn't play out the way it uh, is imagined. You know what I mean? Like, I think they imagined it on paper and they thought of this idea, but the way it was executed on screen and you see it and the way and the actor they chose, no, it's just, it's very bad. It's very cringeworthy. So a lot of those scenes between Alice and the young actor who plays Jacob just don't does not click at all. Major negative is going to be the look of Freddy Krueger. And I think it's very much, he's got this, bubblegum kind of color look to him and he's too clean looking just the makeup at this point it looks too like the burns are just like perfection you know what i mean the way his face is designed you can clearly tell it's makeup design and special effects and all that you know what i mean it doesn't look like anything accidental happened or it's actual burns like it looks like it's very purposeful the way it's laid out or the way it's laid out on his face and the color design like i said it has a very kind of bubblegum pinkish color to it so yeah in terms of that like i said those are two huge huge negatives with this film and our third negative is probably going to be that there's not that many kills in this one very much. Like, to me, that doesn't bother me because this is a very story-oriented uh, Freddy Krueger film, you know what I mean? It's not a lot about the slashing or the killing. That's not really what this film's about. But yeah, this one, could you can definitely do with a few more kills. I think there's a couple more characters that we probably got to probably could have dispatched in this film and we could have had a couple more kills also having an uncut version we need to see the uncut version of this film because there are some really gruesome kills even though there's very few there's some really gruesome ones in this film and we need to see the uncut footage and it would be really cool to see it added into the movie like and you could actually watch it so hopefully on a physical media release coming out maybe later this year or next year we might get that that we discussed the positives and negatives we got to nail down a rating for this bad boy and a nightmare on elm street part five a dream child is going to get a seven out of ten for the rad rating like i said it's very close to dream uh master dream child and dream master like i said are right there like i think i have a uh, dream master at a 6.5 dream child's at a seven to me they're very much great like if you can combine the positive elements of both and kind of mold them into one huge amazing movie this would probably be like a really epic freddy krueger movie probably like a nine out of ten you know what i mean but there are some positives holding these movies back and stuff but i really do like dream child and like i said this franchise we're still having fun as it stands right now we're on to the fifth film and for me we've had positive reviews for all of these movies so far but now we're going to get into the sixth installment. Like, we're, let's, we're, we got some rough patches to get through once we talk about this sixth film. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review. Please let me know down below in the comment section what do you think of Dream Child. I would love to discuss and also like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.